I think we're ready. Um, okay, make sure you guys have your uh, cameras on so that I can see you guys. Make sure you have your waters ready so that we can start. Okay. I think we're good. <laughs> All right, we're good. Awesome. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Um, welcome. Thank you guys for joining me today uh, to my Airbnb and experience. I'm very excited to have you guys all here today. And um, very, very, again, excited to introduce my sport, which is karate. Uh, before I begin, I would love to get to know you guys first. So if you guys can introduce yourself with your name, where you're from, where you guys are actually at right now, and if you have any experience with karate or any form of um, martial arts. So who wants to start first? <laughs> you can uh, please go ahead and unmute yourself so that I can hear you guys. I can start here. Uh, I'm Gianna and this is Lisa. Hi. We're in San Jose, uh, California, and I have zero experience but I play other sports. <laughs> okay, what do you what do you play? Um, I do tennis and soccer. Oh, nice, awesome, nice to meet you. No, uh, no experience as well, and I'm not an athlete, so I'm a little nervous, but excited. <laughs> <laughs> okay, awesome, it'll be fun. Nice to meet you both. Right. I can go next. Um, Gianna, I'm also from San Jose, California, um, so I guess it's a party here. Um, I haven't done karate before, but I've done like two solid weeks of Taekwondo. So nice. I think that was some experience. Awesome. Nice to meet you. Okay. Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm, hi, I'm Yushu. Hi. I'm here in the, I'm here in New Jersey. I recently graduated from Cornell University <laughs> this May. Oh. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I have zero experience in your sports, but yes, I do have experience in tennis, in swimming. And thanks for my university providing a bunch of random, interesting PE courses. I did have some other experience as well, but not this one. So excited okay. to explore something new. <laughs> Great. Awesome. Thank you for joining. Nice to meet you. Okay. Nice to meet you. Next. I'll go next. <laughs> awesome. Hi, everyone. My name is Yuka. I'm in California, San Diego, California, but I'm originally from Japan, Kyoto, Japan. Um, I've never really done karate before, but I've done karate sessions from uh, Sakura's Instagram Live, if that counts. <laughs> Yes. Awesome. Forward to this session today. Awesome. Thanks for being here. Okay. Who wants to go next? Please, Sam. <laughs> I can go next. My name is oh, Sam. I'm in okay. Oregon. Hi. Hi. I have zero karate experience, so <laughs> I'm a true beginner. No worries. Everybody's gonna walk out as karate girls after this session is done. So. We're good. Nice to meet you. Okay. Um, I can go next. I'm Linda. I'm in Oakland, California, joining a lot of the other Californians. Um, yeah, I haven't ever really done karate, but I've done a little bit. I've tried a little bit of martial arts, like both Taekwondo and Judo. Oh, nice. Awesome. Thanks for being here. OK. Next. I can go next. Okay. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Alicia. I'm uh, also joining from California. I'm in uh, uh, Fremont. Uh, yeah, I have zero experience with any martial arts. So I'm really excited today. Nice to meet you. All right. Probably the youngest one in this group. Introduce your name, where you're from, and any experience in karate. My name is Yasko, and I have done karate when, since when I was four years old. Nice. And where are you at right now, Yasko? I'm at Alaska. 
You're in Alaska. <laughs> nice. What time is it there right now? It's four o'clock. Four o'clock. <laughs> That's great. Thank you for joining us, Cole. All right. Um, I think this is a group. Um, pleasure to meet you all today again. Today we're gonna I'm gonna introduce you guys to quick basic movements of karate. Um, just to give a quick introduction before we start that, I want to introduce myself, of course. <laughs> My name is Sakura Kukumai. Um, I am a Team USA Karate athlete, uh, recently qualified for the Tokyo Olympics for next year. Um, I started karate when I was seven in Honolulu, Hawaii. Uh, it's where I was born and raised when I was younger. And my mom basically threw me into a YMCA class when I was at that age because I just needed something to do. Um, and I en remember putting on my karate gi, um, my uniform, and I remember just running around and punching. But I think my mom saw that I really enjoyed it. So from YMCA, uh, we moved to a karate dojo, like a karate school. And that's where I got introduced to many other athletes my age. A lot of athletes were older than me. Uh, my sensei, who I admired and looked up to all the time, and that environment allowed me to, you know, keep pushing, keep training and competing, and it kind of led me here where I am today. Um, I tried different sports too. I did soccer, I did tennis, I did swimming, but at the end, I kind of stuck with karate. So I'm very excited that um, karate is part of the Olympics for Tokyo because karate originated from Japan. Um, it started in Okinawa. It's an um, island down south of Japan. And then from there, it spread to mainland Japan and then the world. So um, I'm very happy that I'm able to kind of show everybody what karate truly is and what it has helped me, um, how it has helped me growing up because now it's my lifestyle. It's not just a sport, but karate itself has is my lifestyle and it has um, helped me um, inside of karate, but also outside of karate too. So I'm very excited to introduce um, this martial art and it'll be fun. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions. Um, I think, I believe you're all muted right now, but give me like a wave or go ahead and unmute yourself if you do have um, any questions along the way. So thumbs up, does that sound good? All right, so let's get to it. Um, I'm gonna rotate this camera right here. We're gonna start off by doing quick warm up first. So we're gonna do jumping jacks in place. Let me show you first before we do anything. So from here, we'll do jumping jacks in place 10 times. And then from there, we're keeping our legs, but we're switching up front like this. So 10 and 10. Okay, sounds good. All right, so let's go. Okay, everybody has space. Perfect. Okay, so jumping jacks in place 10 times and go. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Switch one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good, relax. So let's do this one more set. We're gonna do ten jumping jacks and ten cross <laughs> in the, in front. Okay. So again, go one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Switch one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. And let's rotate our arms forward. Big circles. Karate involves a lot of um, fast movements. So it's really important to make sure that we warm up our bodies. Okay, in the back. Yeah, big circles. Awesome. Okay, next. One forward and one back. So make sure you 
Good. Big circles. And switch, one forward, one back. Awesome, okay. In and out, make sure you open up your chest. Good, now we're gonna cross, big X. Good. And relax. Okay, rotate your wrist, your ankles. Okay, good. Okay, let's breathe in through your nose, always stretch up and breathe out, down. Good, one more time, breathe in through your nose. Make sure stretch all the way and down. Good, one last time, all the way, breathe in, stretch and down, relax, great. Okay, so today we are going to do three movements if we have time. So I'm gonna introduce punch, which is called tsuki in Japanese, which is the most important thing that, um, that is really important in karate. Um, and then I want to work on one block, which is called down block, gedanbarai in Japanese, and one kick, maegeri, front kick. If you master all these three things, punch, a block, and a kick, we can perform like one full kata if we want to. <laughs> so um, so let's start. Okay, so for a punch, I want everybody to hold a fist. Make sure your thumbs are not inside, okay? Thumbs are out, tucked in, good, just like this, because we're basically punching somebody right and you don't want to punch with your thumbs in because that will allow your thumbs to break and we don't want that to happen so make sure thumbs are out perfect everybody's fix is good okay next bring your arm forward straight like this and all the way and let's pull one hand to the side great so this hand is extended all the way Amazing. Okay, and this hand is called a hikite. So hikite means pull hand, literally <laughs> hikite. And this position, it doesn't go below the hip bone or it doesn't go to the chest. It goes right above the hip. So this is where your hikite wants to be at. So from here, we're working our punch. Slowly, as we rotate, Switch hands, we're gonna rotate our wrist and we're gonna punch. Good. Okay, let's try that one more time slowly. One. Good. Two. Amazing. And three. Good. Now the key point is that our elbows want to stay tucked in. So when you punch, we don't want to swing out like this. We want to keep our elbows in, close to the body when we punch. So let's try again. One, and two, three, good, elbows in, four, amazing, and five, good. Okay, now stay where you are with a punch. We are punching with these two knuckles. So make sure your wrist is not this way or that way. Straight line across from the shoulder. Good. Okay, now let's go a little medium speed. <laughs> a little faster. Okay, and I'll count in um, Japanese. It's good. Ni. Amazing. Sun. Ship. Go. Good. A little bit faster. Yeah. 
A little bit faster. Itch. Me. Sun. She. And go. And relax. Okay, go ahead and rotate. It's a lot of fast and tweaky movements, so it's really important to have uh, strong arms when we punch. Um, and one other thing is to try to keep your shoulder square during. So our shoulder is not going to twist to the side like this when we punch. This shoulder is gonna stay straight as we punch. Good. Yes. <laughs> oh, you guys are pros. Looking good. Okay, so let's try again. A little bit faster, 10 times. Try to keep your elbows in when you punch. So instead of going out like this, try to keep your elbows in. And from here, this hand shoots out. From here, shoots out. Okay, so let's try. Okay, yo, itch. Very good. Me. And make sure you breathe out. Some. She. And go. Look. Sit. At. Good. And do. And relax. Okay, rotate. Um, grab a sip of water if you can. <laughs> Any questions so far? No. <laughs> are you, okay. with, our, with our legs, like are we at a slight bend? Or mm -hmm. Good question. So for me, I try to keep it, it's not completely straight. So. My feet is shoulder width apart, like this. And it's not completely bent. I kind of have it straight, but it's just a tiny, just a little bit enough to balance. And I think it's hard, it's hard to punch with just your shoulders. So it's really important to punch from legs, core, and then it kind of shoots out. <laughs> Um, so yeah, to answer the question, uh, shoulder width apart and keep it just a little bit bent to, um, balance. Good question. Okay. Everybody else is good. All right. Okay. Nobody has, has anyone worn a gi, but I guess to those who haven't done, no, huh? Okay. So when you, this is what I wear. So it's called a gi. Um, it's white. It's heavy, actually. It's not that light. So when I actually wear this, it's um, it's like a bathrobe. So it's the crisscross. I tie it here, and then here. So when I do work on my movements, like my punch, this gi makes a snap, and you're able to hear you're, I'm basically able to indicate if I did a technique right or wrong based off of how my gi sounds. <laughs> so from here, you can, okay. So that's that. When I punch, I think you can hear the snap like that. So it makes this sound where the gi snaps when you punch fast and strong enough. <laughs> Were you guys able to hear it? I hope the microphone worked. Yeah. <laughs> Great. So um, I really enjoy performing kata too, because when I walk into the ring and when I perform, like all I can really hear is this gi and I don't hear like the audience or anything. I just like completely get into the zone where I can only hear myself breathing and just this. So it's like an amazing, I don't know, like experience to have like walking into the ring to just to be able to hear just this. 
So <laughs> just kind of wanted to show like what it's like. Um, again, it's kind of heavy. So from here, even all the movements, um, let's say I do a block, it makes a snappy sound, right? And it's not from like me hitting. It's really just from this movement of, so when I say elbows in, I don't want to my elbows to do this. I want to keep everything closed so that <laughs> the power kind of shoots out, if that makes any sense. <laughs> yeah, so, okay, so let's kind of have that in mind and we'll do 10 more punches and jump into a block next. Okay, so again, back into that uh, punching position. Good. Okay, full speed, as fast as you can. It's good, very good. Yeah. Some. Try to keep your back straight. She. Go. Look. Sit. Hut. Good. And do. And relax. Good. How's everybody doing? Good. Okay. No injury, right? <laughs> okay. So next, um, down block, gedanbare. So here, we're gonna start off with the same thing. So let's have our fists closed again, both hands out like this. Okay, next we're gonna bring this down, not completely down, just far enough. And we're pulling this hand back again, Pide. Good, now we have a down block. So this is blocking any attack that's coming below. So any kick or any punch, this is how you block. Okay, so now this hand is gonna go to your opposite ear. One, set, good. This too, make sure your elbows are closed all the way. And the hand that goes up is gonna go down into a block as this hand pulls, knee. Great, good. So same thing, this hand goes to the opposite ear. One, two, one, two, and one, two. Good, make sure this is pulled back. Great, one, and two. Okay. With a little bit more speed. So let's try connect the two. One, two. Good. So as this goes down, the hand that's out is just going to pull back. Good. One, two. Great. Right. Knee. Very good. Some. She good. and goal. Good. Okay. A little bit faster. Let's try. Each neep. Sun. Good. She and goal. Good. And relax. Good. How are we? <laughs> Everybody okay? <laughs> it's confusing, right? A little bit. Yeah, it's a lot of coordinations. Um, but for karate, there's two disciplines. So there's kata, which is a discipline I do, and there's kumite, which is um, sparring. For kata, it's a choreographed movement um, of punches, blocks, and kicks. And this choreography is a maximum of probably three minutes and a half, the longest. Um, there's a list that they give us um, about list of katas, around less than 100. 
And as an athlete, we have to pick which kata we want to perform. We write it down. We represent it to the referees. And so they know what we're going to do. We walk in and we perform. Now, this form, kata, is very, it's choreographed already. So there's no freedom for us to change routines within that kata. Um, that's why it's very um, different compared to other sports where we cannot change anything. It has to be as detailed and precise as possible. So um, they judge us based off of um, speed, power, but also preciseness of how detailed you can get um, as you're building up speed and power into these performance. Um, and I kind of like to explain kata as I'm basically telling story of a fight because every movement has a meaning, right? And <laughs> I'm just gonna put my gi on as I explain, but for kumite, they basically put hand pads and shin pads on where they basically do a fight off where they interact and they um, gain points based off of um, how they punch or kick. For kata, they, we have to perform to show details, but also show the speed and power. I say it's a story kind of of a fight because every movement has a meaning to it. So for an example, just an, ex an example, um, you will see me start off from here. This is a block. From here, somebody's attacking me. I, I imagine somebody attacking me. So from here, I block using a shitoke, a knife hand block. So from here, somebody's coming. So I block. Somebody's coming again, block. Now next is a punch, like the punch that we worked on. So from here, I punch, okay? But then I'm gonna have to block again. Punch, block. So next, somebody is attacking me from behind. <laughs> so the routine goes from here, I go towards the back. I block, Some, and I have to kick. Somebody's blocking from behind. So every single movement has like a detailed meaning. And we do this for three and a half minutes. <laughs> All these movements are choreographed. So I can't change the block or the kick because it's already what it is. Um, it's our job as athletes to show speed, show power. But at the same time, like for me, I like to, I love kata because I can show like my personality, like I can show, give like my take on that specific kata um, as I perform. So just a quick <laughs> info, any questions? Feel free to. How many moves are typically in the three and a half minutes? Oh gosh, good question. It could probably be from 60 to 70 and more. Because just that one move was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So that itself was twelve already, um, and it's just a continuous movement, and we have to stop. And I think that's the hardest part about kata in our sport is because it's not a flow of continuous movement, where we cannot jump and then land and then keep going. If we jump and we land, we have to make sure we pause and then just keeps going and going so any other good question though thank you any other no oh okay hi hello i oh. want to ask uh, what can <laughs> you do to assist your yeah your to assist your training what do i do to assist my training yes um i do a lot of strength and conditioning too um, I do a lot of basics with fundamentals that helps me build a good foundation. I'll get to you, Yesko. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> um, and I also do um, strength and conditioning, which involves a lot of um, core stability training um, and just a lot of balance related uh, training that I believe it really helps with my performance. So, yeah. Thank you.
What you got, Yasko? <laughs> what can I do to jump high? What can you do to jump high? Really good question. Um, cool. That's a good one. I I practice. So the question that she asked, what can I do to jump high? In a kata, there's a movement where we have to jump from one position. We have to jump and then we have to land. So there is one movement in one of the katas. Um, and what I have been doing, Yesko, is that I... <laughs> I have this high box, this box ready, and I practice just, I just do jumps. So from here, I just, from here, I practice a lot of jumps. So one, two, one, two, just a lot of that and a lot of um, leg strength. You need strong legs in order to jump, right? Because you're lift, using your entire body and you're lifting yourself up and then you have to land. So I'm focus a lot on legs um, and a lot of training to build muscles around my legs. But at the same time, you know, I really just work on basics. If you have strong basics, you can shoot out from whatever stance you are at and you can just jump high. So just keep training hard. I, I know that you're training hard. So <laughs> keep working at it. Good question. Strong legs. I think, I feel like that's common in all sports, probably. Anything else? Up until now, we're good. Okay, so we covered punch in a block. Kicks? <laughs> okay, so let's try kicks. So this is called a maigiri. So from here, um, everybody can be on shoulder width. So the stance is good. From here, let's practice bringing our knee up. So have your hands up over here, over your chest. And we're basically bringing our knees up. Make sure your back is straight during this time. Like don't bend your body like this, back straight at all times. And we're just bringing your knee up as fast as you can. Sounds good? Okay, so I'm gonna count. Ready, itch. Yep. Some sit and go. Look, sit, hut, here, and do. Good and relax. Okay, next three counts. So this is called a front kick. From here, we're gonna lift your knee up. One. We're gonna balance. Two, we're gonna extend our leg and then it's gonna pull back to where it started. So two and three down. So I'll show you one more time. One, knee up. Two, kick, pull back. Three, down. Amazing. It's good. Okay, so let's try. So in place, one, balance, yep. and some down, good. Itch, as as you can, bring up, yep. and some down, good. Itch, yep. some, good, itch. Balance, knee, and some. Okay, let's try one more each. Itch, knee, some. One more, itch, knee, and some. Good, and relax. Hard the legs. Okay, good. <laughs> It's a lot of core and a lot of leg training. Um, you need to be able to balance when you bring your knee up, but also when you kick. So point number two, when you kick, you don't want to kick like this with your heels. We want to kick with the balls of the, toe, of the feet. So make sure you go one, two, and three. 
<laughs> yeah, okay. So let's try connect those three together, three movements. So we're gonna go one. Good, perfect. Okay, let's try. Ready, medium speed. Itch. Very good. Ni. Sun. Shi. Go. Okay, now a little bit faster. Now this time, I want everybody to try snap the leg back as fast as you can. So this snap is going to be very important. <laughs> All right, so let's try. Itch. Good. Me. Very good. Sun. Chi. And go. Look. Very good. Back straight. Shit. Hut. Good. Last one. And jump. And relax. Everybody okay? Hamstrings are okay? <laughs> Any questions so far about like the technique or kicking? I know there's some um, Taekwondo experienced people here, so you guys should be good with all the kicks. Very good. Uh, go ahead and grab a sip of water uh, before we get into the next. Yes, question. What time is it at your time? <laughs> it is 9.38 a.m. Nine? Yeah, not too early. <laughs> Isn't it tomorrow, though? Huh? Isn't it tomorrow? It is tomorrow, too, and I'm in the future. <laughs> okay. But, yeah, what we worked on with the punch, the block, and the kick, this is the practice that I do in normal training. Um, this training with the punch, block, and kick, I can I do this for probably like two to three hours just to perfect that one movement. Because these the punch that we worked on, the down block, the gedanbarai, and the front kick, my giri, it comes in, it show it pops up in all the katas. So I need to work on perfecting this first before I do anything else. So what we did today is my normal training. <laughs> and I just do this for three hours and four hours in for a long time. Yes. Who is your favorite athlete? <laughs> really good question. Um, I had an opportunity to train with a world champion from Japan called Rika Usami. She um, became a world champion <laughs> in 2012. I was actually on the podium with her um, and I got bronze and it was my first world medal. And I, she did an amazing performance where she performed the kata and there was a standing ovation. Like everybody just stood up and clapped for her. And that experience is just an unforgettable uh, moment for me as an athlete and seeing her, you know, accomplish what she accomplished in that tournament meant a lot. And I trained with her too, so I looked up to her so much. Um, so I gotta say, she's probably one of my favorite. <laughs> Good question. Thank you for the question. Any, is everybody following with the movements? Any, um, things that pop up we're good okay so let's try come oh <laughs> yes another question when are you gonna go back to california <laughs> soon soon very soon <laughs> i don't know yet <laughs> very soon <laughs> i should visit alaska that's where i should go <laughs> Okay, let's mix it up. So we worked on tsuki, punch, 
we worked on the down block and we worked on the kick. Now, one main thing we didn't really do today that is really crucial in karate <laughs> is kiai, which is the screaming part of it. <laughs> and has anyone like heard or watched, has anyone seen karate competitions before? So one, two, three, four, okay. Um, Linda, have you heard the kiai, like somebody yelling and screaming? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I feel like it's like one of the notable parts. If you if you're watching a competition, all you hear, I feel like, are is the <laughs> okay. So, um, thank you. So, um, in our uh sport karate, uh, we have this thing called kiai, which means we're I wouldn't want to say screaming because it's not screaming, <laughs> but it's this um voice. It's the yell that we do to show that we completed one movement. So in kata, in that three minute and a half kata, you would hear an athlete do a kiai probably about three times the most, maybe four, but at least two times you would hear two kiais. Now, everybody's probably like, what is a kiai? Is it just yelling and screaming? It kind of is, but it's not. Um, so when I kiai, it's like saying the letter A. So I'm just going to do it as an example. <laughs> and it's actually great, especially during this time. You can just let it out. You can scream all you want. You can get it all out there. <laughs> and it's a good stress releaser. <laughs> so from here, I say letter A because it sounds like A. When I complete a movement, I don't use, it's not from my throat. It really comes from the stomach. So from here, <laughs> I let's say I do five one and the next one when I kiai I say Ay! so it comes from the stomach after I finish some movement I finish with a kiai Ay! comes from <laughs> so it kind of sounds like a letter a <laughs> when it doesn't but I always like to say a because it sounds like it um, and this is very crucial in karate and we worked on a punch, a block, and a kick. So I just wanted to make sure that everybody could <laughs> try that at least once. <laughs> if you guys can, without scaring anybody <laughs> around you. <laughs> so we'll get to that. Let's try combine it first and then towards the end. But if go ahead, um, you can kiai all you want during the process of it. <laughs> so let's try combining it. So from here, we will do down block first. So down block, go ahead. One. Okay, next, we're going to punch. Two. Okay, now we're going to kick with the same leg that you're punching with. So my front kick with the same leg. Perfect. Okay, so those three combinations. One. Uh, two and kick three. Perfect. One, two, three. One, two, and three. Good. Now let's try to speed it up a little bit. Okay. Let's try one, two, and three. One, two, and three. Okay. Last one. One, two, and three. Good. And relax. Look good. Everybody's following? Yeah. Okay. Switch legs. Okay, so whatever you blocked, let's block with the opposite hand. So one, two, and three. One, two, three. And one, 
two, three, great. Full speed. Okay, let's go. Okay, down block first. Itch. Yep. Something. Itch. Yep. Something. Itch. Yep. Something. Very good. Let's try two more. Itch. Yep. Something. Okay, last set on that kick, if you can. <laughs> Can't. <laughs> okay, let's try. Okay, last one. Itch. Knee. And kick. Hey. <laughs> and relax. Good. <laughs> Grab a sip of water. That was kind of um, the intro uh, where I wanted to introduce you guys to some of the movements and um, in karate. Uh, any questions so far from that, from the movements? There's so many blocks. Um, so we worked on down block, but there's um, knife hand block, there's outside block. There's upper block. <clears throat> There's, what am I missing? There's a kakete, which is you're grabbing somebody and you're pulling back. And in kata, it's very, um, karate is really like never that aggressive. I think as everybody thinks that it is, I think that um, when I perform a kata, I really enjoy showing the power, the, you know, the strength, but I also enjoy showing like the grace, like through the movement, there's something um, there that's just not about power. It's, it's about showing beauty to the movement too. And even if we're all performing the same thing, we're all shaped differently, right? Like I'm kind of smaller in size, I'm not that tall, but what I can bring in the ring, in the mat is something different compared to other athletes because we're all different. Um, so that's something I really enjoy. It's um the contrast of strong and slow part too. When I was explaining that there's strong blocks, there's also the soft part too, where I, I block and then I go slow. Then I go fast, then I go slow. <laughs> and I really enjoy being able to like show that through the movements. And if you're there and if you're actually watching the match, you'll actually be able to feel it because you can hear the gi and you can hear us breathing while we perform. So yeah, it's something that I, um, I think that's a little bit different compared to other sports. And I really, really enjoy um, practicing karate <laughs> because of those reasons too. Um, we have a little bit like 10 minutes-ish and I kind of wanted to use this time to do like a Q&A if anybody has any questions about karate or um, like my journey uh, leading up to like right now next year. But if you want to have, please go ahead and unmute yourself or give me a raise of hands. <laughs> Are you just training in Japan right now? I yeah, both. Um, my family is here. Um, and that's, I think for me, it makes this Olympics um, very special because I grew up in both countries, in both cultures. And um, I started karate in Hawaii, but when I did come back to Japan, I um, went to school, not only went to school here, but I also trained with a lot of athletes here. And I do have family here. So it's right now it's a um, visit for both. Um, but then again, that's the reason why it makes this Olympic even more special to me because karate originated from Japan and my, you know, family being from here and I'm able to represent the US um, at the Olympics in Tokyo kind of made a full circle in that sense. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm very, very excited. <laughs> it keeps me motivated. Yes. How many hours do you train? <laughs> Good question. 
Um, when I'm in the season, I train from six to eight hours, sometimes more. Um, as I said, with a kata training, there's so many movements. And if I want to perfect every single movement and work on details, I just go hours and hours and hours of training. Um, and there's actually like a funny story where I was younger, uh, my Japanese sensei lo would lose track of time. So we will start at 10 a.m. and we will go until like 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. without him noticing what time it is. And he is like, he was an old school, you know, at that time, like a really old school Japanese instructor where <laughs> basically he forgot time, which meant that there was no lunch break. And he encouraged us to write notes while we train so that we don't forget. So we had a notebook and paper, uh, pen and paper on the side. I was so hungry <laughs> that when I looked back at the notes, I believe I drew like drew a banana, like an apple. <laughs> like I was so hungry. I was pretending that I was writing something down where I was just drawing pictures of food because I was starving. <laughs> Um, yeah, just a funny story. <laughs> yeah, good question though. Long hours. <laughs> Any... um, does your training change as you get like closer to the Olympics? Because I know like for Olympics, it's like four years. So now that you're down to like one year left, like mm -hmm. will it change as you get closer and closer? Uh, yes, um, it will change at the same time because we have no, we don't have any events right now. Um, the training regimen will probably be kind of be the same. It's not, I'm not going to be training for one event that's this year. Um, there's a lot of things that I, I do want to work on now that we do have an extra year. Um, I kind of want to use this time to work on the details that I couldn't before. Um, during this Olympic qualifier process, we were traveling from one place to another every two weeks. I was never home in California because um, we were constantly traveling. And there were a lot of things that I wanted to work on, but couldn't because of the competition schedule. So um, for this entire year, I do want to use this time to work on the things that I didn't have before. And I'm pretty sure as we get closer to the games, the intensity of training is going to get higher and higher. But um, for now, I really want to use this time to work on small details um, leading up to the games next year. Yeah, good question. <laughs> yes, um, let's, okay. Are you still happy that you got selected for the Olympics? Yes, of course. I was I was um very honored, like thrilled. You know, this is the first time karate is a part of the Olympics. And when I was younger, when I was your age, Yasko, I didn't really, you know, think about karate in the Olympics. Um, I actually trained karate because I just loved the sport and there was a sensei that I looked up to and I was like, oh, I just want to be like her. You know, uh, so that was my motivation. And now there's this opportunity where I'm able to introduce karate to the world at the Olympic Games and represent my country. That is so meaningful to me, especially that it's held in Japan. Um, when I got announced, I was so I was so emotional. It was like I was very happy. It's very happy to know that all the hard work paid off. So, yeah, good question, uh, Alicia. <laughs> Yeah, uh, who or which countries would you say are your biggest rivals in the upcoming Olympics? Good question. Um, so in karate, especially in my category, the top, um, I would say five athletes right now are from Spain, Japan, uh, Italy, uh, and Hong Kong, so, and US. So those will be like the top five um, who are in the ranking right now and they're all amazing athletes and we always strive to get that medal every time um, at these events so um, all they're all amazing athletes and I'm really looking forward to going against them um, at the Olympics because I know that everybody's training really hard right now uh, so yeah they're 
they're they're great. <laughs> Any other <laughs> questions or no? <laughs> well, um, again, um, I appreciate you guys for being here today. Um, I I hope that you guys got like a little bit. Uh, like the small experience of what karate is. Um, and I hope that I can see you guys in the next experience coming up. I am planning on doing more in the future after this um, to introduce more movements. Hopefully we can do like a full kata because now that we got like the down block punch and a front kick, we probably just need two more blocks and figure out one stance to complete one kata. And it, it's probably just one minute and a half kata that we can just memorize and learn and just practice on our own. Um, but again, thank you guys for being here. Um, make sure you check out all the other experiences that are up on the Airbnb and um, appreciate you guys for being here with me today. So thank you. Hope you guys enjoyed it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you guys. Take care, stay safe. Thank you.